How's it feel to be here? It's cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting. How many sacrifices does it take to sit in the chair right now? Well, a lot. Um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey, so being background in the New York City area just you know, brings back a lot of memories of all the hard work I put in just to be able to, to go to the high school and I even go to Ohio State and, um, you know, all the work that I put in the situation to even be here in this chair right here, you know, it's just it means great. How far did you go up from Where in New Jersey? Just got over. No, it's what, what is that, 40 minutes? Nah, not that close. 40? 40 minutes. You were, when you were a kid, did you dream about this? How much did you dream about this? Oh, a lot. Um, you know, being able to be in New York City for the high school, you know, every little piece of dream from football. So, um, you know, I'm here now, so it's going to be the moment. Dwayne, what was it like early on in earlier this week when you guys found out the news that Urban Meyer wasn't going to be back next season and that Ryan Day was going to take over as head coach? You know, it wasn't surprising, but, um, you know, coaches have a lot of health history uh, the last couple of years. So, um, you know, Coach Day's done a great job throughout fall camp in the first few games of the whole entire season with handling our team and handling the offense. So I feel like he's going to be the right man for the job. Wayne, did you say it wasn't surprising? No. So, like, how, like, as a player, when you say it's not surprising, what does that mean? Like, are you picking up hints on the way? Are you paying attention to it? I mean, it's a big deal for the program, obviously, and, you know, probably a big deal for what your your decision that's going to be coming up in the next few weeks. Yeah, I mean, as far as with Coach Meyer, with that, with that assist, it's pretty serious. So uh, I knew that he would eventually stop coaching when I didn't know, but I know that um, with the headaches he's been having and then, like, the issues he's been dealing with health-wise, I mean, I would tell him personally if, if it was affecting his life, he should stop coaching. So, you know, I'm glad he still has his health at the end of the day. So, um, you know, Coach A, since he's been here, has been all about the program and the players. So, um, you know, Coach Mark did a great job giving him all the tools he needs to be a coach. Dwayne, what tells you that Coach Day is the right guy to take over? This um, his professional background, you know, his um, offensive background. He's a really smart guy, you know, really, you know, people person, and um, he gets messed out a lot of people on the offense. So I'm um, excited to see how defense responds to him. But um, I definitely think he can do it after having the first three games of the year and having camp and you know, him being the head guy during that time. You know, people fed off of his energy, and um, he's the right person for that. Wayne, does this have an impact on your future at Ohio State, losing no. your coach? Yeah. No. Yeah. Why was playing in the Rose Bowl the right decision for you? You see guys who you know, go another way with that decision, looking ahead to you know, spring and their health, that sort of thing. What, why for you was playing you know, what you decided to do? I mean, I wanted to send Coach Meyer on the, on the right note and um, be able to play in the you know, one of the biggest world games of all time and then um, be able to play for my teammates whether you know, I would declare or not. So um, there was never any thought about me not playing in the game. Do you understand why some other guys are looking at that differently? Yeah. I understand. I mean, I can't speak for anybody else while you don't play in the bowl game. You know, a couple of my friends decided not to play in the bowl game um, when they declared. But, um, you know, I just feel like being a quarterback as a leader, you, you owe that to your team to play. And, um, you know, I wouldn't want to be able to sit there in front of my team and tell them I won't be able to play. I want to let my let my guys down. So, you know, I have to play in the bowl game. Dwayne, so that, that quarterback position is different, right? Like, yeah. um, it's scrutinized more leadership in the draft, everything. Like, is it just almost impossible for a quarterback to sit out even if they wanted to? Just based on just, like, everybody would just be like, he's not a good leader, and that's yeah. a huge thing at your position. I mean, I'm sure someone has probably thought about it before, but, you know, just being a quarterback, you know, it's, it's, your, it's your job to lead the team. And for you to say that you don't want to play, I just feel like that means you're not about the team, you're not about winning or losing, or you just want to get out while you can. So, um, I mean, there was no doubt about in my mind about playing the game because I know I can help this team win. So um, whether I was thinking about leaving or not, just to know that I have opportunity to leave was great. But um, there was no doubt about me playing the ball. Coach Day was really instrumental with this offense becoming more pass heavy. So him moving into this head coach position, do you feel like you know you could even top the records that you had this year? I mean, <laughs> that'd be pretty hard to. But <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if it's possible, Coach Day would definitely be able to help me go do that. And um, you know, there's been some games where I threw for 200 yards, going to 20 yards, and consistency is the key. But um, with Coach Day, I feel like 
you know, does a great job preparing me for the game. And, um, you know, just for him to be the head coach, we just mean that he won't be able to be as hands-on as he was with me during the season. But, um, you know, with Corey and the rest of the offensive coaching staff, I'm sure that he'll still have his hand on the offense the way that, like, Riley does at Oklahoma. So I'm not really worried about that. Dwayne, if I wanted the relation of your relationship with Coach Day from last year when you were obviously back up to now? It is so with trust. Um, been able to have coach, uh, you know, progress as an offense coordinator to play caller, you know, just took time. And, um, very, and just, just to see the growth he's had since time he's been here, I know there's a lot for him, for his family. This is that he's able to be a head coach, you know, it's his dream of his, and I'm um, really proud of him. Why do you think he's going to be a successful head coach? Yeah, just because, for one, he's a great person, and secondly, he's a great football mind, and um, we'll do a great job, you know, with my teammates and myself, being able to prepare them for the game. He has all the tools from Coach Meyer and Coach Nick, and there isn't anything that really, you know, that I feel like he can't do. So um, I'm going to be really good at Coach Meyer. Where were you when you uh, found out you were a finalist, and uh, what was your reaction to I was home, and um, I don't have cable, so I called Jerry and FaceTimed me, and uh, he showed me on ESPN, and um, I was with my girlfriend, and I was just like, I cried just because of, like I said ever before, it's just a dream come true. And I'm be able to be here in this moment, right here in New York. We've been a lot of work to get to be able to be here. So, um, you know, just a feeling of joy and um, just happiness. Dwayne, how do you not have ESPN? <laughs> I mean, I had an ESPN, so I'll tell you a story. So, I had an ESPN on my on my uh, Google Play, whatever, Sony TV. But they didn't have, like, with, like the specific channel that the announcement was on. So, I was, like, watching Boomer talking about something on it. Well, yeah, uh, Jerry was saying it was ESPN, too, that you were getting Yeah, I don't know. So, I mean, I, I, thought, I thought I had it, but I didn't. So, I called Jerry. Now, fashion is a big component in this with the suits and stuff. Do, can you give us any insight into what you might be wearing tomorrow night? I can't give you too much. I'm going to have something nice to wear. I'm excited for it. Um, you know, I'm, I'm really big into that stuff, so um, I feel like I'm going to pretty, pretty, look pretty good tomorrow. Did you have anyone help you with it? or any? Yeah, I mean, I'm into it. My girlfriend's into yeah. it. Um, I hope my family is. I have a whole bunch of friends that are into fashion. And um, just trying to find the right suit, find the right you know, accent to be able to stand out from the crowd. Um, I'm excited to see what I can do. Did you write a speech? Did I write a speech? Yeah. No. What? Why not? I feel like I'm pretty good off the top. So um, I took public speaking classes in Ohio State, and I had a speech actually on Thursday for one of my classes. And um, you know, I just feel like we should have like an idea. I have an idea what to say, but I didn't write anything down. But um, you know, if I do win, I definitely have something nice to say. So you didn't use yesterday as a, as a test run in case you're holding the trophy tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> you can say it like that. What do you think of that? I think I got a good shot. Um, you know, I'm excited for it and um, just to be able to sit there and be there in the moment. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. Dwayne, are, are you the party that would be disappointed if you don't? There's not a competition of winning or losing. I'm just excited to be here. Are you the best quarterback in Ohio State history? <laughs> I would say I would think so, but there's great guys before me, you know, with Braxton and Troy. Um, you know, Terrell, JT, and then going back to Jermaine and, and um, Seaster and everybody else like that. But I felt like I had the best season, so, you know, I'd probably say the best quarterback. I mean, it's like you grew up thinking about being here. You grew up idolizing Troy Smith, the last Heisman winner. Is it weird to just be sitting here in this room in the New York Stock Exchange getting that question yeah. and being able to say maybe? I mean, I think so. I think I, I can be a really good quarterback. I feel like I can, you know, Hall of Fame, all that type of stuff. But um, I got a lot of work to go get there. And um, like I said before, I only feel like I scratch the surface on what I can be. So I'm just looking forward to putting the work in. Do you ever look at mock drafts online? No. Because a lot of people have you looking or going to the Giants, maybe. I didn't know if you were apartment hunting with Jerry this week. <laughs> no, I wasn't. <laughs> Dwayne, I asked you earlier this week about being here with Tua and Kyle. You talked about how cool that was going back to when you all recruited and Elite 11 and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it, when you guys were going through all that, hitting each other, did you guys think that this would be something that could happen down the road, or is that something that a high school kid even thinks about? I never talked to them specifically about it, but um, always if I wanted to align my dream with goals and, and actually go do it. So for me, going to Ohio State was something I wanted to do, so I went and did it. And then in the high school, something I wanted to do. We'll see what happens. But, um, you know, and this it's crazy how life works. And then you see guys like Tyler and Tua who are, you know, big dogs in high school. You know, Tyler's probably the best high school player of all time. So um, to be in the same conversation with them is just humbling. And um, knowing that I can only still get better in my first year starting, you know, it gives me some motivation. Does it feel, does it feel weird knowing you had the season you had and that kind of a lot of a national perception is focused on those two guys more than you? I call it being underdog.
does that does that does that drive you? I mean, does that kind of drive you knowing that you're here and you you still kind of have that underdog chip on your shoulder? Yeah, I feel like I'm the best, but you know, I can't make my own decisions. But um, as far as with the, with the Heisman or any other award, you know, I just gotta keep getting better until you know the word goes says otherwise. But you know. It is a blessing to be here, and uh, I'm excited for the guys there in competition with me as far as trying to go win this thing. But, um, you know, it's not my choice. Dwayne, I feel make like a... you've always been confident. Yeah. But, like, as the year has gone on, your ability or your willingness to say certain things seems to, as you were successful, gets more and more. Like, you say, I feel like I'm the best. I don't think you would have said that four months ago. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Is your confidence, is your willing to express, has that evolved along with the season that you had? You got to earn your keep, I feel like. Yeah, you just can't come out and say things unless you haven't shown that you could. So um, for me, I just need the opportunity to play. And I got a shot to play this year, and I did pretty well. So um, like I said, I feel like I only can get better. And um, I feel like I'm not ceiling is pretty high. I don't expect you to answer, but have you made a decision about what you're going to do in terms of performance? When will that Decision to be made, how will you make it? No, after the bowl game, I sit down with my family and talk about it. But um, right now, the biggest thing about being Washington, playing in the road bowl, and uh, helping out coach go on a high note. But um, you know, I'm here in New York, you know, I'm not really worried about you know, making a decision in the NFL right now. You know, I just want to be in the moment. Can you talk a little bit about Kyler and the year he's had, and just how Oklahoma was able to transfer transition from Baker last year to Kyler this year? Yeah, the middle offense is spectacular. Coach Riley is a really great coach. Um, you know, he does a great job with Kyler and, and when Baker was there too. I'll be playing them for like my freshman sophomore year, so I watched it firsthand. You know, how explosive the offense is and the play calling that he does is, is a phenomenal job. And um, I always knew how great Kyler was since high school and just decided that he had an opportunity to showcase that this year. How much of a difference do you see in Baker's game and Kyler's game? I know they're two different players, but. Uh, definitely explosive, big plays, you know, smart guys, you know, they got to make wild plays. You know, um, I haven't been able to watch him, like, sit down and watch the game the way I would like to. But, um, you know, watching the highlights, watching two of his highlights, you know, they're all really great for the best. Dwayne, what, uh, what does this mean to be here and know what it means for you? What does it mean to be here to represent the Blocko? And how is Ohio State helping you? Yeah, I mean, Ohio against the world, you know. Um, you know, we had a lot of controversy going into this year, being fourth to finish in the Big Ten, and then be able to come out on top win the championship, you know, just be able to, you know, for me, being a quarterback isn't always about me. It's about helping the team out, finding a way to give the ball to the playmakers and being a leader. And I learned how to do that every game this year, getting better with that every game. And um, just to be able to be here, represent my team and my coaches in the university, you know, I'm just really blessed. And um, I really can't think of enough for helping me get here. What would be your, what, what does it say about quarterbacks of your generation that all three of you guys are first year starters, had hardly played, you know, just a little bit coming yeah. into this season and just completely dominated. What, is, what does it say about the development of quarterbacks these days and where you guys are coming into school? The yeah, preparation is key. Um, you know, sitting back watching JT for two years, I said I probably learned more watching him than I would have played in my first two years in college football. So, you know, being able to watch how he dealt with, you know, having, you know, shortcomings with a loss or for him not playing the greatest game or him playing a fantastic game, watching his highs and lows gave me the opportunity to know what it's like to be a starting quarterback even though I wasn't playing. So then for me to be able to go play this year, I, I had already kind of experienced what it was like. So it wasn't fairly new to me, I would say. So um, to have the opportunity to, to watch him, similar with like Kyler and Tua, with having Baker, having Jalen in front of him, you just wait your turn. But you know, you see everything that they've gone through, and then use those tools to help you out when you start playing. And that's probably why we did so well this year. What, where did it go from, I think I can do this, to I know I can do this? I always knew I could do it. I just needed opportunity. And, um, you know, I never bashed JT for being the guy he was because he was a great guy. But I always wanted to have the opportunity to play, but I knew I wasn't ready to play. But I knew I could do it. So, um, you know, he taught me a lot when his time was there. He's a great leader, phenomenal person. And um, he did everything he could to get me ready for this year. And I appreciate him for that. Last year, did you think you should be playing? I mean, I thought I should be playing, but I think I should oversee him, though. But, um, you know, to be able to, to still learn from one of the greatest progress of all time Ohio State and then still have opportunities to play in games like the Michigan game or the NLB. And, um, you know, just learning tools to, for me to go into the spring ball and then be able to do that in camp in the season. I'm very, very um, helpful for me. Are you amazed at how fast all this happened? Like, going from just a first-year starter, not everybody had heard of you yet, and other markets to be sitting here right now, potential NFL draft pick, Heisman, all the stuff. I mean, your life has probably changed pretty dramatically the last three months, right? I mean, my family and I do a lot of speaking into existence. We prophesize a lot of stuff. So 
I always knew that it was a matter of time. I didn't, it didn't surprise me that I had a great year this year. You know, really big on our faith and um, believe that we can do anything we put our mind to. So, um, you know, all this doesn't like really surprise me. So I'm just, like I said, just enjoying the fruit of my labor and um, just trying to be here and enjoy the moment.